Hello my Tubies and my Teletubbies, it's Sheila True Love and today's topic for discussion, should we forgive our narcissist? Now my thing is forgiveness doesn't necessarily mean reconciliation. If you can discern that a person is a habitual liar, underhanded, sneaky and an abuser, perverted and sick and twisted, and they continue to be this way, you have the option of not being in their company. No contact with negative and evil people. That's just because, you know, you know, that's not required in order to forgive someone. I have no problem, like I said, when it comes to the forgiving part, where I do have a problem is trusting them again. They have to work hard to gain that back. However, I know that Jesus tells us, if you love me, obey my commandments. And one of his commandments that he tells us is that we have got to forgive each other. So if for nothing else, for the love of God and for the love of Jesus Christ, we should forgive. Having an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, however, that's the only way. <clears throat> and that's the only thing that is going to truly help us to forgive those who have deeply hurt us because that's hard to sit here and pray for somebody and ask God to bless them. Even though the blessing could be that they wake up to realize that how much you hurt people and all the rotten things they've done at the same time, it is hard. Now I have comments from a couple of other folks and Shelly, she says, it's so hard forgiving, especially when it's your family that has hurt you so much. But since God wants me to forgive, I will try. She's going to try really hard to forgive. And then we have Lola. She said, starting a new day without thinking about your past. Don't miss your chance today of creating beautiful memories for tomorrow. And a part of that, you can't dwell on positive things if you're stuck on hating and not forgiving. And then we have Jackson. Jackson says, I hope this helps me. I have been having forgiveness issues for seven plus years. Elizabeth Mitchell, she says, this is all true in my opinion, but I feel that one thing gets lost re 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 uh, regarding preaching on forgiveness is that people have got to understand forgiveness is not the same as trust. Isn't that what I said? I agree. We need to forgive those who wrong us but particularly if the person doesn't take responsibility for what they've done or change their behavior, it doesn't mean that we need to re-enter the relationship with them. We are told to be wise. And now we have a comment from a man here. His name is Ned. And Ned says, I had no problem forgiving my wife for her adultery, her drug use, her alcohol abuse, her oh God, her attempted suicide, her running away. He says, truly in my heart, I forgave her in person with words. Letting her go, however, is another matter. I have not learned how to do that yet. So Ned, regardless of all these things that he claims that she's done, I wonder why she was trying to commit suicide. Why was she drinking and drugging the way she was? I don't know. But anyway, he's willing to take her back. He just don't want to lose her. Sometimes abusive people, they do want to hang on to people that they can abuse. But anyway, I don't know. Then we have Carlene and she says, I had to learn that forgiveness is a process and then allow myself to live it out one day at a time. And after I listened to these other people's comments and me having a hard time trusting certain people again, as you know, I love me some Joyce Myers. I love her. She helps me so much. Oh, just saying her name excites me. She has been through so much abuse in her life by her father and her mother did nothing about it. Yet, when you listen to how she handled it and how uh, the Jehovah God had blessed her, Jesus Christ, and God blessed her abundantly because she had the right mindset. This is how she was able to do it because you and me, it would have been hard. And I think about after all her father and her mother did to her, 
She still took good care of them until, guess what? Until they died. She made sure that they had everything they wanted and everything they needed. Now, she's just as imperfect as you and me. She's not perfect. And she went through a whole lot like crazy. I know she's been through a lot more than anyone that I know. All the abuse for so many years that this woman have undergone. And because of her attitude, God and Jesus Christ, they have blessed her beyond measures, beyond. She is such an amazing lady. She reminds me so much of my mom. My mom, because my mom, she was a humanitarian and my mom had a strong type personality, just like Joyce Myers. Anyway, let's listen in on how she managed to do it. Understand the importance of the healing aspect of forgiveness. Well, you know, I've kind of learned as people that before we do much of anything, we want to know what the benefit is. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I mean, human nature. Yeah. Human nature. And so uh, you almost, in order to get people to study, you have to present to them what this is going to do for your life. So if, if people can understand that as long as they don't forgive, they're poisoning themselves. It's like hating somebody who's hurt you is like taking poison, hoping they'll die. It's like me being mad at somebody who hurt me that's out having a good time and don't even care that I'm mad. That doesn't hurt them. No. And so maybe this husband's been gone 20 years and he's been having a good time in life and you know, he's married again and, and whatever, and he couldn't care less that she's mad and still suffering. He's moved on, sadly, he, but he he's on. moved on. And so <laughs> it's it's pointless. It's like, OK, you hurt me. But now if I'm going to hate you, then I'm letting you continue to hurt me and have control in my life. And you're controlling my life. And I'm not going to do that. But, John, I think the other part of this is and I think this is very important. I think a lot of people want to forgive, but they don't know how to do it. Okay. And so as I've pondered this and studied it and prayed about it, the things that I feel like I've learned from God is this. First of all, to, to do anything, you need to do it the way God tells you to do it. And so he said several different places in the Bible that you pray for your enemies. So first of all, are you praying for people that have hurt you? Well, what do you pray? I mean, we're like, well, I don't really want them to be blessed. I'm not going to pray for them to be blessed. <laughs> God, don't bless those people. <laughs> but the truth is, is really, I mean, you can take somebody that's really hurt you and ask God to bless them. And the first thing he's going to bless them with is revelation of what they've done. Because they can't really have a right relationship with him if they don't admit what they've done and come to a place of truth in their life. God desires truth in the inner being was what. King David said after his shenanigans with, with Bathsheba, and he went a whole year without confessing his sin, I guess making all kinds of excuses for it. Then in Psalm 51, the great prayer that he prayed, he said, you desire truth in the inner being. So every person, before they can have a right relationship with God, they have to face the truth. You can't get to where you need to be if you don't face the truth about where you're at. And so for forgiveness... I don't think you can ever walk through. I can decide I'm going to forgive somebody, but I can't walk it out in my life if there's not some things that I realize. First of all, God's not asking me to feel differently about them. He's asking me to pray, mm -hmm. to bless and not curse, which if you study that, it means to speak, ev to speak well of instead of evil of. Mm -hmm. So I need to stop talking about them in an unkind way. Change your vocabulary. Change your vocabulary. So when I talk about what my dad did to me, I don't do it to put him down. Hold on, guys. Hold on a minute. Down. I do it to help other people. So if I'm talking about it with a good motive, that's one thing. But if I'm talking about it just to be talking about it. And out of your own pain. And out of my own pain yeah. and out of my own bitterness, then that's another story. Now, that doesn't mean you can't go get counseling if you need it or something like that. But bless your enemies and do not curse them. How many times do we read that and don't even have a clue what it's talking about? So I pray for you. I pray that God will bless you. I pray you'll be saved. I, I pray that God will open your eyes. You know, I, I pray in obedience to God. And I mean, I've even prayed and said, you know, God, I don't really want you to bless them, but you told me to pray for that, so I'm going to... And, God, and God's not uncomfortable with that I, prayer. Yeah, I I'm going to pray in obedience anyway. And then I make a decision to stop talking about them. Yeah. And then I... 
So I, I decide what I'm going to do. I pray. I trust. And then even if I still feel like I'm angry, yeah. I don't say, well, I haven't forgiven because I still feel this way. I say, God, I've done my part. Now your part is to change how I feel. And so an example that I can think of, if you want to take this a little bit further, there was somebody that I went to church with one time that hurt me really, really, really bad. I mean, really bad. I won't get into the details, but one night we were in church and the pastor did what pastors love to do. We'll go and hug somebody and tell them you love them. So I turned the first person I see is her and I'm thinking, Ain't no way, I'm gonna, no way am I hugging you and telling yeah. you I love you. Yeah. And, but I oh. knew oh. in the pit of my gut that that's what God wanted me to do. Yeah. Okay. Well, I didn't want to, I didn't feel like it, but you can still do in obedience to God, what he tells you to do, even if you don't want to, and you don't feel like it. And those are the things really, I think that break the enemy's power off of us when no matter how we feel, we will go and obey God anyway. Yeah, it is that we don't go by feelings, we go by faith, and we right. go in obedience. And then when we take that step of obedience, yeah. God gives a power and a, and, a, and a blessing to us for that act of obedience. But you know, a lot of times we learn little nifty phrases like that. We walk by faith and not by sight, but we don't really apply it sure. to a situation like that. Yeah. And so I had to literally, in faith, go and do what God told me to, even though I didn't feel like it. And yeah. you know what I've learned that's really good? When you do what's right, when you feel all wrong about it, boy, that's when you're growing spiritually. That's the stretch. That's the stretch. That's when you're growing spiritually. And you know what? Of course, it's been a long journey, and I didn't learn this overnight. <laughs> I won't stay mad at somebody now. It's just I'm not doing that. I don't have time to be angry. I'm not wasting any more of my life being mad at people. It's so unproductive. That doesn't mean that I don't get hurt. It doesn't sure. mean that it's easy. But, you know, the Bible says to bless those who curse you. And one of the things that's great to do, I tell pastors all the time, if you have some young man that you've mentored and loved and he splits your church and takes a hundred of your people down the street and starts his own church, yeah. don't hate him. Buy him a sound system. Go take up an offering for yeah, him. Yeah, go take up an offering for him. Because, <laughs> yeah, that's the way to do it. Because we overcome yeah. evil with good. That's right. I mean, Romans 12, 21. Sure. I'm getting the devil back now every day that I open my mouth and share God's word. That's how I get the devil back, not by hating the man who hurt me. I'm now, do you not understand why I love her so much? She has such an amazing Christ-like, she's not religious. She's very, very spiritual. She is such an uh, amazing woman. And I can understand <clears throat> why Jehovah God and Jesus Christ, they have blessed her because of her attitude. Like she mentioned, it's not easy. God knows it's not easy to pray for someone and ask God to bless them after they done ripped your heart out of your chest. You know, that's a rough one, but it is possible when you uh, rely on Jehovah God and Jesus Christ. So I just wanted to share this with my tubies and my Teletubbies. And uh, you always have a choice. Please choose wisely. Until next time, we'll talk again. Bye for now.